he will make AEW money if you bring him back. I don't think that matters. And I know from a business perspective, of course, making money matters. CM Punk is a toxic presence in the AEW locker room. Support Wrestle Talk. Should AEW fire CM Punk? It is arguably one of the biggest questions the wrestling industry is facing this year, or, you know, for many years. It's the biggest thing in this potential looming AEW WWE war, and we're going to devote some time to it. I'm Ollie Davis. I'm joined by Chopper Pete Quinnell. If you haven't already, please give us a subscribe, press the thumbs up button, and leave your comment and thoughts down below on whether you think AEW should let go CM Punk. But for now, I'm going to open on point number one, Peter. Hello. The reason why AEW shouldn't fire CM Punk. Sure. Yeah. Well, I haven't finished. Is that the world's smallest Wait. violin? No, no, no. No, oh, okay. no, no. Wait. Mm -hmm. Here's the second part of my argument. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good, yeah. Compelling. Good stuff. Can I borrow your hand? No, absolutely not. I this hand's being, hands. Hand being reserved. But this is an example of how much money mm -hmm. this guy brings in. Mm -hmm. I think this is why this is such a difficult topic to talk about because on paper, the the numbers alone, and Tony Khan is a, a numbers guy. He has a sports analytics company that money balls sports to give you the biggest bang on your buck. And here is a guy, and WrestleNomics posted this really interesting tweet. There was a report that WWE were like, well, maybe he isn't that much of a draw really. And WrestleNomics said, mm, well, if you dig into the numbers. Actually, uh, his appearances often increase quarter hours. So that mm -hmm. is in episodes of Dynamite or Rampage. When he is in a 15 minute segment, those outperform the rest of the show and those same quarter hour segments from previous weeks, ranging from about 5 to 15%. He is, by TV viewership terms, a draw. The the five pay-per-views that he was on are five of AEW's highest selling pay-per-views ever. And I, you could argue that that was just because of AEW's point in their life cycle. They're a growing company. But I think if you say that, you cannot take away Punk's part in growing that company and bringing those buys in. He main evented two of the $1 million gates and arguably a third he wasn't on. But for what is, let, let's remember, AEW, at the end of the day, when you boil it all down, is a t-shirt company. Of course it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has four of the top selling items on Shop AEW and Pro Wrestling Tees. The only one, the only new one that's broken into that sort of top five is the, uh, Scissor me daddy ass, mm. which is, I still don't know how people wear that in public. It's something, isn't it? Mm. I mean, like, if you look at it from that business perspective, I think him as a drawing power is undeniable. Like, he, he, he will make AEW money if you bring it back. I don't think that matters. And I know from a business perspective, of course, making money matters. And you can make a lot of money for AEW. But... CM Punk is a toxic presence in the AEW locker room. At this point, I also feel like that is undeniable. Hmm. This is a man who has gone on record in a press conference, in public, live, in front of Tony Khan, and just like crapped on the entire roster and be like, I don't like these guys. These guys suck. I don't like being here. This guy is uh, annoying me. This guy is annoying me. I don't like any of this stuff anymore. And if you bring him back, it sets a precedent that you can get away with that sort of behavior. And especially because as all of the reports, and especially from the elite side and the CM Punk side of the allegations in the brawl out stuff, both of them are now saying like, yeah, CM Punk swung, swung first. CM Punk instigated the actual altercation that happened backstage there. A man who actively sought out a fight backstage. That is not a person you want to have in your locker room. That is a guy who detracts from everybody else. It's a guy who's not popular in the locker room either. And I think the uh, the happiness of the entirety of the rest of your locker is, uh, your locker room, sorry, is much more important than making a bit more money. Uh, it's, it's called the wrestling Business, Pete. I'm not aware the wrestling of that. Friendship. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm Sh well aware. Show me a MMA or a wrestling or a sports locker room mm -hmm. or a roster that hasn't had egos clash in the past. Right, that's. I would say that that is a problem with the wrestling industry. Is just, that there are too many egos? I think. I, I think you see this in MMA. I think you see it in sports as well. It's Absolutely. not confined to, to no, pro wrestling. Of course not. 
but I think that allowing those egos to flourish and still be as huge as they are is a problem and should be fixed. Not something that's like, well, that's wrestling, that's sports, so we'll just go with it. I don't agree with that at all. And I think that if you're rewarding CM Punk for coming back and making money and putting him in big stories and whatever else from there on out, you're then saying that that kind of behavior is okay and other people will do it because, well, it makes a good story. I, I think that is a really slippery slope. I think in the short term, you make a lot of money. In the long term, you alienate your locker room and you alienate, alienate a fan base because he's also not popular with fans now either. This stuff has soured him, soured a lot of fans on CM Punk, and I think it would turn people off to see him come back. Um, you mean the perfect heel turn storyline. AEW are lacking in top heels right now, particularly as this has weirdly caused a double turn with mm. MJF. Yeah. The the reverse of this was presumably meant to happen where Punk was the big baby face, the saviour of nice time wrestling, uh, and MJF was going to be the evil guy who mm. was going to go to the evil WWE, which also turned baby face <laughs> yeah. in all of this. But the, the crux of it is, I do not disagree that Punk is a... Uh, you know, very toxic presence. Mm. What I am saying is these numbers show that, my God, something has to be worked out here. Mm. This is not a issue that's been bubbling for years. This is an issue that's been bubbling for three to five months, mm -hmm. most of which Punk has not been around for. He was out injured. I mean, and I, they've done a long six, seven week investigation into this. But I just, I look at this situation and I'm like, and I agree that, that he shouldn't be rewarded for what he did. But those numbers, he was the AEW world champion. He pulls in all of those buy rates. Mm -hmm. Is there another way to resolve this issue without firing him? Look, Andrade, you could say like actively seeking out fights backstage. By all reports, Andrade did that with Sammy Guevara to maybe get out of his contract. Mm -hmm. He's been suspended, it seems like. Yeah. Why can't we get a situation where Punk is suspended? I mean, we could, but I also still feel like then you have to then treat everybody else exactly the same. Because if you're keeping CM Punk uh, on your roster, specifically because he's a big draw, you then are treating him favorably because he's CM Punk. Uh, which, which is 100% correct. Yeah, I know, which I don't agree with. Yeah. I think you should treat everyone on your roster the same. If someone did exactly the same thing as CM Punk, who isn't CM Punk, they should be treated the same. I think this is idealistic. I think you can easily say that, but the fact of the matter is people, as of those numbers say, are just more worthy of leeway than other people on the roster. If Captain Sean Dean did this, mm -hmm. no disrespect to Captain Sean Dean, he'd be fired immediately. Yeah, but which I don't Punk, agree with. But with Punk, it's like, oh, this is... Because, because actually, there is a very clear thing that they've done this with already. Mm -hmm. Punk cut an unscripted promo mm. on Hangman Page yeah. the moment he got back into the company. If anyone else did that, they would probably be at least suspended Reprimanded in some way. Probably fired. Mm. Um, but because it's punk, mm -hmm. he got away with it. Yeah. And maybe that contributed to the his feeling of power. Because if you kept him and you turned him heel and you managed to resolve these issues, like six weeks you're investigating things mm -hmm. and you're trying to find a way to work it out. But punk is injured anyway. Mm -hmm. There is six months, right, between mm -hmm. he, he tore his triceps in that all-out main event. Yeah. He's not going to be around. Why can't you just go, okay, well, you're suspended and you're injured. Mm -hmm. So you are, or I don't, you, they don't typically suspend people who are injured. So you just say, well, he's injured. We can't do anything right now. And just see how everyone feels in six months. Mm -hmm. And I, then maybe there's more scope to say, hey, let's turn this into a storyline because those feelings have been repressed a bit. I'm sure you could, and you could bring him back in six months and you could make a story out of this and then he'd get injured again <laughs> because he's injured all the time. Like he's, he's, <laughs> he, he broke his foot and he tore his triceps in two AEW world title matches and without he would have had to vacate the title you had the interim John Moxley run and then you have this one where he's had to vacate it which probably would have had to have been another interim run if he didn't get suspended and all this brawl out stuff I can't argue with that he's he's what he's 40 40, 40 something 42 maybe yeah. between 42 45 uh it's it's unfortunate the amount of injuries he's had as soon as he became champion but he was on a tear beforehand mm. Yeah, I, ca I cannot deny the injury point, but I also 
don't think that is enough of a reason to get rid of this person because mm. he he is good enough as a promo mm. to just be like a commentator, a manager, find another use for him if he can no longer actually wrestle. That is fair. There are uses for him. But I think if you're keeping him under the basis of we can make stories out of this, we need to keep him because he's such a big merch driver and he's one of our biggest guys and he's going to help sell gates. Having him as a commentator mm -hmm. or a manager doesn't achieve that. That's not the same thing at all. He's still not, he's not that caliber of draw if he's not wrestling. I'll tell you my biggest point mm. here. Because I, I'm un unashamedly, well, maybe a bit shamefully these days, mm. a CM Punk diehard fan. Mm. He is... I couldn't tell. You know, <laughs> Eddie Kingston's number one. Yeah. But Net CM Punk's number two. Mm -hmm. I, the, up until last Friday, I was like, he's got to go. It's unfortunate. Hands are tied. Mm -hmm. But then that report came out where the sticking point in the buyout, potentially, mm -hmm. of his deal is that he is the non-compete. Yeah. And you and Luke were like, well, why is there a non-compete there? Mm -hmm. Where else could CM Punk immediately turn up that would be heavily damaging to AEW? The threat of CM Punk going to WWE mm -hmm. in the short term, I mean, for the remainder of this year, or before WrestleMania, or to be honest, at any point, is so potentially damaging, I would do everything in my power to keep Punk under contract. It's a very WWE mentality. I just need him, no matter how bad that is for us, because the the idea of him going to WWE is so much worse. Is it? Like, I'm sure it would be real bad for AEW if CM Punk went back to WWE. I'm sure he'd make maybe more money for WWE than he would for AEW. Because mm. I think there's a lot of people who might not have, a lot of casual WWE fans who might not be too into the whole AEW CM Punk stuff. CM Punk would show back up in WWE and be like, oh, it's this guy. I haven't seen him in so long. That's great. He's back. Well, look at the, the ratings. I think AEW, even at their heights of Punk's return, you're looking at 1.3, 1.4 million viewers. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Raw does that. More than that every week. Yeah. It does 1.6 to 1.9. SmackDown does uh, 2.5 or low twos maybe, yeah. but to threes on a good day. If Punk's returning to SmackDown, you could get 3.5 million viewers, which is triple the amount that AEW ever got with him. Which is, again, undeniable, I think, that he would probably make WWE a lot of money. But at what cost? You know? <laughs> because CM Punk doesn't like WWE. Quite openly. And he doesn't just not like Vince McMahon. He also doesn't like Triple H. Hates him. Like, there's a lot of stuff to work out there if he did want to go back to, to WWE. And would he like being back there? Would this be another case of him going back to a company, saying like, oh yeah, I'm back, and then another thing like this happens where he gets frustrated and he gets wound up and then something like this happens backstage again because there is precedent for this happening. It might be great for WWE. Again, I feel like this is the same thing as in AEW. In the short term, he would make you money. In the long term, it'll be real bad for your company and a real bad look. I think... Punk's impact on WWE, if he turned bitter, would be less than mm -hmm. Punk turning bitter in AEW. And I think, because like, why would Punk go back? He hates Triple H, all that stuff. The other thing about Punk going to WWE, Punk is seems to be like quite universally disliked, mm. but he does have a camp. All the reports say, you know, there's a Punk side and there's an there's a elite side. Mm -hmm. For me, I look at who those other guys who are close to Punk could be, who would potentially make the jump with Punk, and it's FTR. Mm -hmm. Punk and FTR, they were super close before Punk got injured. That I I see FTR as on the opposite side to the Bucks mm -hmm. in this divide. Yeah, I think if Punk goes, I think you're in danger of losing FTR. I think FTR are already in danger of leaving anyway because they seem to be a little bit frustrated with their booking in AEW and they're probably quite they like Triple H and things like that so there's I think there's already an argument for them going to WWE anyway there are sides to it but I don't think the sides are even in the amount of people in both sides and if you pick one you're alienating the other mm. and if you pick CM Punk you're alienating the elite so if you bring CM Punk back are you willing to potentially lose Kenny Omega and the Bucks are you willing to potentially lose Hangman Page like to not just lose them, but lose them where? Yeah. To WWE. To WWE, right? Bucks reportedly sent out feelers to WWE mm -hmm. yeah. that their contracts sort of come up for renewal at the start of every year. Is it more damaging that CM Punk goes back to WWE or is it more damaging that WWE picks up the elite and hangman oh. page? 
along with Cody. And Cody as well, <laughs> and have all of them in WWE. They might as well sign Tony Khan by that point. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, that, that it's, it is a huge thing. I do not envy Tony Khan. But let us know what you think in the comments down below. I'm sure it'll be a lively discussion uh, topic, so please keep it civil. But for now, I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Chopper Pete Quinnell. Subscribe and jam that jam. <laughs>